Hello, everybody. Nice to see you tonight. How about a little Tuesday night devotion? Why wouldn't we? Hi, folks. Yep, the lost has been found. I'm back. <laughs> I was voted off the island, and now I'm back. No, that's not true. Hi, Debbie. Yep, I'm back. Oh, is that a nice little wave? Well, that's new for me. <laughs> I think I like that. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good to see you on a Tuesday evening. The Nick at Night is not tonight. Hi, Kimmy. How are you? Nice day for a swim is exactly right. And a beautiful sun summer night, I'm thinking, why not be outside? Because these are like the longest days of the year. My favorite daylight savings time and longest days of the year. And uh, why not be outside and enjoying it? So, good deal. Well, Nick is doing some doctorate classes for crying out loud. And uh, I'd rather be here than doing doctoral classes. Even though that would be kind of interesting. And he's just the guy for it. Oh, we've got more waves. Hi, Bradley. Mr. Meyer, how are you? Mr. Campbell? Yep. Look who has returned. We found him. Don't pay the ransom. Not that any of you were, by the way. So, <laughs> nice to see all of you. Nice to see everybody. Good to see you. We're going to have a little devotion this evening. And then we're going to rest in the Lord. So, uh, if uh, your child hasn't slept for a while, if you have been restless at night, we're going to trust the Lord. We'll give you a good night's sleep after a good word of the Lord tonight. And I know it's good because I'm going to do more reading of the word than I am myself doing talking. Because I think that's where the power comes from, is from the word. So it's good to see all of you. Yep, the lost is returned. A good deal. Your 12-year-old grandson's surgery went good today. Praise the Lord. Thanks, everybody, who's prayed with that situation. Mr. Baker, good to see you and anyone that would be with you. Tonight, we are going to talk a little bit about Proverbs tonight, just for a, a moment, just for a bit. So it's good to see you this evening. I haven't been with you for a couple of weeks. I had the uh, privilege of uh, bringing the word of the Lord a week ago Sunday, so I was off that weekend and and uh, the weekend before that, I had done the morning devotion. So uh, they took me off the weekend. So who knows what's next? So it's been, uh, it's been good. Good being with you again this evening. So we are joining the outside, the, uh, the good life outside. Enjoying it while we can. And, you know, when it's cold, we just long for these warm summer nights. Well, we got them. And when these summer days, so we can't complain about them. We've got to enjoy them. So it is good to be with you this evening. Good to be with you. And uh, so we'll take it a day at a time. Good evening to all of you. It was good to see you the last couple of Sunday mornings, the last few Sunday mornings in person. So I appreciate all of you coming out. We're trying the best that we know how to, uh, to uh, separate ourselves, keep a six-foot barrier around us. We're trying to wear masks. We're trying to do the right thing, the proper thing. Everybody's got an opinion, and you try to uh, do the best we can with, uh, with all that's there. And as it gets darker and darker, I'm hoping I can read the Word this evening, because we're going to be in trouble if I can't do that. So we're going to give you just about one more minute, and we're going to get started. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. It is an absolute pleasure to be with you this evening. We are going to, I'm going to read one or two little verses in 1 Kings. And then we're going to switch over to Proverbs chapter 2 and 3. I'm going to read just sections of those chapters, and we're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to, to do that. And, uh, and we're going to trust that the Lord will speak to us from His Word. Once again, good to be with you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Good evening. Yes, Mr. Killen, good to see you this evening. Hope things are going well with classes where all you people Mr. Moore, long time no see. Hope things are going well with you. Good to see all of you here this evening. We're going to read from the Word of the Lord. And in 1 Kings chapter 4, uh, let's just start with about uh, verse 32. It says, talking about Solomon, he spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. 
He also spoke of trees from the cedar trees of Lebanon, even to the hyssop that springs out of the wall. He spoke also of animals, birds, creeping things, and of fish, and men of all nations from all the kings of the earth who had heard of his wisdom came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. I love the wisdom of Solomon. The more I've looked at Proverbs, there are so many things in Proverbs that you can base your life on. When you want to know answers, Proverbs are amazingly uh, full. Uh, should we do this? Sometimes even in a church board meeting, we will discuss, should we be involved in this? And sometimes in looking through Proverbs, we find certain scriptures. And I'll be glad to give those to you at another time and, and certain examples. But we'll find scriptures that says, be careful with being involved in this because it warns against that. That's the power of the Proverbs. And I just want to start in chapter 2, and I want to read a segment of chapter 2 and a segment of chapter 3 because I love the power that's in this. It says, My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and imply your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, love that, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of justice and preserves the way of his saints then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. It goes on to say, where wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, from those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of of darkness. Chapter 3 says, My son, do not forget my laws, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace will add to you. Mm. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. I'm willing to bet that scripture verse may be written on the floor of Grace Evangelical Church, underneath the carpet in the present sanctuary we are in. I would be willing to bet that that scripture verse may be written on there more than any other. Only because I know several people that I talked to when we wrote scriptures on the floor before the carpet was laid that, that stand on that scripture. They stand on Proverbs 3, 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Lean not on your own understanding. They talk about at air shows it. If you've ever gone over to Rosecrans and the Air National Guard and watched the air shows, you see trailers set up next to the, to the uh, runways. And in the fields, there are certain trailers. And they'll, they'll be along in a straight line. It's like, what are those trailers doing? I thought it was very interesting. I had the chance to talk to a pilot over there and said, exactly what are those trailers? I mean, are they, were the things unloaded out of those trailers? Or what were they for? And they said, those trailers are there because they're a straight line and a boundary for the pilots. The pilots look to those trailers when they're doing their twists and their turns during the air show because so many times there is vertigo and, and which way is up. When they spin around and do all things, it's difficult to tell which way is up and which way is, which way is down because what seems right is not right. And what they're taught is you trust your boundaries. 
You trust those things, those straight lines that you set before you started, whether it feels right or it doesn't feel right. You trust in those boundaries. And I think for every one of us, the Word of God gives us boundaries. It gives us reasons. It gives us uh, rules to live by, if you will. And they may not seem right at times because the world will tell you, that's crazy, this is right. There are times in life when rather trusting in yourself and what would make sense is not the way to go. I encourage you, always trust your boundaries. And those boundaries are the Word of God this evening. Trust those places that you have found the Lord. And I, uh, I encourage you to dig in for understanding wisdom and knowledge. This word says you can have it in everything in life. Now, it doesn't come necessarily easy. That's the thing. So many people think, well, I've asked for it. I should get it. Just like that. This talks about treasure, that you seek it as you do treasure. When you're seeking treasure, and I told you when I read it, I love the story of treasure. I've always loved the hidden treasures and looking for those treasures and putting together those clues and finding that treasure. When you really want it, you, ha you just don't stumble onto treasure. You have to want it. You have to dig for it. You have to look for it. That's what you have to do. The story is told of a young man who came to Socrates one time, the great philosopher, and he said, give me understanding, give me wisdom, and give me knowledge. And Socrates says, young man, you come with me. And they walk through the city, right down through the square, and right on out the other side to the, to the ocean shore. They waded in about waist deep when Socrates grabbed the man by the head and stuck his head underneath the water, what seemed like an eternity. And when the man fought with everything he had to pull his head out and get that breath of air, he said, Mr. Philosopher, I don't understand exactly what you're trying to do. And he said, when you want wisdom and you want understanding and you want knowledge just as badly as you wanted that breath, just as badly, that is when you will find it. And I love that because the answer is really in verse 2, and I believe it's verse 5, and it's almost getting too dark for me to see. But it said, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. When you really want it and you seek it on your knees before the Lord in a daily, in a daily uh, habit and a, a daily pattern, when you really want it and seek Him, He won't, won't withhold that which is good from His children. You will understand the fear of the Lord and you will find the knowledge of the Lord and it will lead you through this life if you keep your eyes fixed upon the, that which is set that which we know is the goal and no matter which way seems right there will be people that says the right way is over here no it's over here let's go this way said, we've got to go this way because it's right this just feels right I'm encouraging you Keep your eyes on the treasure and on the prize. And the key is the fear of the Lord. Let me pray for you this evening. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity with these good folks, Lord. And we all want the same thing, Lord. We want to know. We want to know you more, God. And I pray that you give us a hunger and a desire inside our souls and inside our hearts that we are not satisfied with the status quo. We're not satisfied with what everyone else would tell us, this is good enough. We want more that's good enough, Lord. We want you. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. And I pray, God, that as we, as we seek and need wisdom in this life, that before we take any action at all, that we bring these things before your word, that we, we, we read your word, we seek your face, and I believe just as you will give that person that is hungry a fish and not a stone, that you will provide for us, Lord. I thank you for these folks, and I pray for those this evening that have had any kind of difficulty, any kind of anxiety that is keeping them up at night. 
I pray tonight that they will do what we call sleep like a baby, Lord. I pray that you minister to these folks, give them a good night's sleep, bless them in all they do, and walk with us in all your ways tomorrow morning as we start a new day bright and early with the doctor, bright and early, 9 a.m. in the morning. So we're looking forward to that. I look forward to seeing all of you. Again, the same game this week, church, 8 o'clock and 10.30 from the sanctuary. And uh, it's always live streamed, but we hope to see you there in person. It was terrific being with you this evening. And uh, I hope you uh, tell someone about the goodness of the Lord. Good night. We'll see you another time.